So if I could ask the CEOs and our directors from Mid North Coast Region to stand up, please. All the delegates from Mid North Coast. Sorry. So on behalf of our CEOs, our directors and our elders, we would like to acknowledge the country of the Warramai people as the rightful owners and we'd like to pay our respects to the elders past and present. Um, I'm Greg Douglas, and, uh, CEO of Kempsey Local Aboriginal Land Council. Uh, do you want to do the, the flick? Um, this is what our Mid North Coast Zone looks like from Karua in the south to uh, Coffs Harbour in the north. And I can uh, guarantee you there are some really, really beautiful, wise people that are there. Um, the place kind of spawned an affable, lovable bullshitter sometimes. <laughs> nah, our councillor, Peter Smith. Uh, I'll, I'll, bring him up, I'll bring him up in a little bit, but I want to say something about the staff out of our Northern Zone office. Um, all, of, all of us really appreciate what you do uh, and respect the efforts and your commitment to what, uh, what you're doing and assisting uh, all of the Lauks not only in our uh, region, but across another two. Uh, phenomenal amount of work and you all seem to get through it now. I just want to say thank you to you guys on behalf of uh, all of the Lauks in uh, your zones. Um, I'd like to um, introduce, uh, oh, oh no, I was meant to say something else. I forgot there, see, I was so keen to introduce. So I think the, this word will actually apply to him. Um, there have been so many people that have jumped on the number one platform, which makes it difficult to find any room up there. So we'll concede that, uh, and we won't say that we're number one, but we will say that we are the deadliest. <laughs> and what we are about to show you is going to prove it, because it spawns incredible people like this dude. Where's that video, woman? You've got to press it. But I've seen it in the banks and I've seen it on the movies And I'm very proud of my address Yes Cause I'm from the Tarry Town I'm from the Birupai Nation Black Father say Who's your mob and where you from? Cause when you're one of us you know you'll always be long And we don't care about your job or the clothes you wear Cause all we wanna know is if we're connected and we usually are true Aunties, uncles, cousins, sisters, and bras, it's just a thing. It's a mad thing about being black, cause we'll always be deadly. Yeah, it's just something in our blood. It's not about death and earth. It's a different kind of blood. See, you are truly the ruler of your own destiny, cause every day you roll. Yeah, cause you're a deadly aborigine. Crap. 
take it if you dare, cause we'll always be deadly. It's just something in our blood. <laughs> That um, that deadly song from a deadly man, brother of a deadly sister, um, is about the deadly people that work in the Mid North Coast region, and I, uh, an honour to introduce a deadly New South Wales councillor. He paid me to say that, by the way. Oh no, he didn't. I no, no, no. Uh, I'd call to the lectern, uh, Mr. Peter Smith. Look, as you know, my name's Peter Smith, Councillor Mid-North Coast, uh, Dungari man, live in Taree, been there for the last 40 odd years, 40 years. Still, they, they, them, still them locals at Taree still tell me to get home, back to Kempsey. Um, I've got to look at pay my respects to the elders, both past and present, and the boroughs in charge of the future, to ba that means babies and children. And the land that we meet on today the Wanneroo Nation in the boundaries of the Mindley River Local Aboriginal Lands Council. I'd just like to make uh, just an announcement for, for um, three of our deceased, hard-working land council legends, I call them, and they were heavily involved, not only, well, one or two of them might have been a little bit more heavily involved than the other fellows in the state law, but we have Uncle Ken Dixon from Kempsey, passed away this year, earlier this year, and Gab Gary Joby Jarrett, a well-known footballer up on the coast, and also Uncle Larry Kelly. Now, Uncle Larry was a legend within the land rights system. He, um, he was a good mover and shaker, and uh, I was told not to worry about the number one region. We, there's, we, we know it, and you know it. That's why we're not going to talk about it. Um, there's 11 lands councils in my region. And before I introduce the, them two, who know that you all know now, the lands councils are Coffs Harbour, Nambaka, Ankai, Barrable, Dungadi. Kempsey, Birupay, which is Port Macquarie, Bunya, Warhope, Foster and Crewa. We ain't a big region, but geez, we make a mark when we, when we do something. Um, there's a lot of, lot of things going on in our region, so I might just leave it at that, give it back to these pair of lovely couple here who's gonna, gonna um, finish up with the um, presentation and then I'll come back with what I got in my paper with a piece of paper here. Watch out for that. Um, I just want to talk about uh, a, a few of the louts that are close to me. I mean, I'm pretty much related to nearly everybody in that whole zone, and I think a lot of us might be that way as well. Um, Kempsey Lark's been operating since 83. We have currently, we've got over 250 members. Um, we've got a really significant vacant land asset base. Some projects that we're working on are really important at the moment. Um, uh, the Kinchula site is a former, uh, Kinchula is a former site of Benelong's Havens Rehabilitation Service and it's the former site of, and I'll tell you it's correct, 
name, uh, the Kinchula Aboriginal Boys Training Home. Um, the Benelong's Haven went into liquidation uh, in uh, September last year, uh, and it looks like a zombie uh, zone in terms of how they moved out of that site. Um, there, we're in negotiations with um, Kinchilla Boys Home Aboriginal Corporation. The reason why this is important to us is because it's pretty much important to everybody in New South Wales. Um, there are a lot of boys and girls that got taken uh, and whether they liked it or not, and I don't know if this is the right word to use, but they were dumped uh, and treated as less than human in our country. Um, the sorrow uh, that exists inside the Maclay Valley because the fact that um, for over 70 years they kept bringing young children who didn't deserve to be taken to there uh, and done all sorts of awful things, which they thought was good, but, you know, that's debatable. And we're, we're working with um, the Kinchler Boys Home Aboriginal Corporation on a, a relationship that we are hoping to... Um, have for longer than the next five years, which will be 100 years uh, of operation in uh, 2024. Uh, the, the site itself is going to take some effort to bring it back to uh, uh, something, but one thing's for certain, um, uh, we don't want anything built on sorrow inside our boundaries uh, and in our country ever again, especially if it affects our people to that way. So. We're looking to turn it into something positive. Working on native gardens, um, working on, a, on some uh, property that we have in order to uh, basically stimulate some interest from uh, people in our community um, to be active like they once were and to go there. The photos there are about um, uh, the, the one on the bottom, the Clyde Bucker Aboriginal area. Uh, th that's a partnership with the Cl Clybucker Custodians Group. That's been going for quite some time. Uh, and Kempsey Lauk works very closely with them and national parks to protect uh, the largest midden site anywhere in the world. Um, it's probably like about 14 kilometres long and um, it's very high. It's an awesome site. Uh, and that that was the day that the signage was uh, released. We get a lot of um, damage in there for people or from people that um, uh, don't give a shit about Aboriginal issues or Aboriginal land or Aboriginal heritage. I'd also like to pay my respects to my brother Richard Campbell over here, um, CEO of Tangari Lauk. Um, and what's really exciting for me and I'm sure for him as well, is that we're in the very early stages of discussing is how we will actually form a force, come together and do some serious things for um, all of our people inside both of our boundaries. And I very much look forward to doing that with you, my brother. Uh, another place close to my heart. I had a good fortune of having an opportunity to work uh, in Coffs Harbour. Uh, I met some really awesome people uh, and learned a, an awful lot about uh, the role of a CEO uh, and the role of a manager in that community. Uh, the Coffs Harbour community is awesome. The site, the place is beautiful. Uh, the people are what makes it happen and I'd just really like to acknowledge um, the Coffs Harbour Lalk staff that are here and the board members, Aunty Jenny, Aunty Sue, uh, Margot and Lockie over there at the table. Hey guys. Um, I really love being there um, and it was a good thing for me all the way around, I've got to tell you. Um, Burpai Lauk is uh, uh, our immediate uh, uh, neighbour on the south uh, in Port Macquarie. Um, some of the things that they've been doing in terms of the successes that they've been having. And I guess we all, while we're having successes, we kind of need to remember we miss a lot as well. Um, the Burrijar Youth Group, Burpai Mitigen Dancers, the, the Learners Drivers uh, Program, uh, Christmas Bells Land Management Program, a new men's shed and community facility, including a Bush Tucker Garden that opens next week. And it's good to see that they're actually planning for the tomorrows with the future outdoor classroom uh, and yarning circle is something that's on their radar. 
Um, a, a few LALCs have been unable to uh, contribute to this presentation, but it doesn't mean that they don't work as hard as anybody else. Um, uh, we will talk about some of them a, a little bit further. So there was Karua, uh, Fluster, um, Bowra, um, and that, that was something that everyone's busy at this time of the year. Um, Uncle, Uncle Lauk uh, is in Maxwell. Um, just a little bit more about me. I'm not just Dungati. Uh, I was born in a family forest, not a family tree. Uh, my heritage is uh, Dungati and Gumbanga, uh, a bit of Anawan, uh, a bit of Gumilaroi, and a, a bit of um, up in Walker as well. So. Uh, Amaru space as well, so I just want to pay my own uh, personal respects to that heritage that I've got and I carry out very proudly with me everywhere I go. Miss Jody, you... otherwise I'm going to bore them all to sleep. You were thinking I can keep talking. <laughs> so I, I didn't introduce myself before, I'm Jody Lawler, I'm the CEO of Perfleet Land Council. Um, Unkai Lauk is one of the land councils within our region and it was established in 2015. Um, Unkai Lauk operates two cultural eco tours and I needed to point out as well that these um, landscapes, the photos in the picture are actually land owned by the land council um, that they operate their ecotourism tours on. And forgive me if I say this wrong, but Gagel Wangan South Beach Tour is set on the pristine, untouched Aboriginal owned National Park. Gargle. Um, National Park upon a beautiful Worrell Creek, Scotts Head, and Nambucca Coastline. How do you pronounce the other one, man? <laughs> the good. Gurja. So you should have introduced it. Guru Jajan Whale Tail Tour operation, Operators uh, operates from the amazing little beach in Scotts Head. Unkai Lauk offers school tours, impound tours and cultural awareness tours. The Lauk employs local Gumbanga people to give their, sorry, to give back to country and, and showcase their community and their ancient culture. Let's go to the video. <laughs> I'm Michelle Donovan, I'm the CEO of Unka Local Aboriginal Land Council. We're based in Maxwell on the mid-north coast of New South Wales. When we, st when we started the uh, cultural tourism venture, um, one of the things we did do, uh, we did a lot of market testing. So what that means is that we had to firstly um, go out and get people to come and do our tours to see if it was viable. Uh, at first it was really hard um, getting the Aboriginal community engaged. Uh, we ended up engaging with the TAFE, which made it a lot easier. And what they actually done was went out and students uh, they were talking to and going to TAFE, they were actually asking them to see if they wanted to join. And also through the employment agencies as well. With the cultural tours, I, I become involved. I found a course that was run through Maxwell TAFE and it was to do tour guiding and I decided to do that while I was out of work. Um, I was also doing a, a Gumbangi language at the TAFE so I thought it was a good fit to um, have language and cultural tours. Uh, I actually live here in Scotts Heads so it was perfect for me to find a job on my home country and where I live. In relation to economic development, um, we see it as a stepping stone. When, when we um, did feasibility studies, we actually did it for three major projects, and that was the Eco Tours, um, looking at a centre to be developed um, for uh, cultural education, Gumbanga cultural education, and then also we looked at a native plant nursery. Now, the feasibility studies came back that said that all those three businesses are viable, 
and that will also then provide other jobs for local Aboriginal people, but it'll also contribute to the wider community economic development. It's a hard slog. Um, it doesn't happen overnight. You have to be patient. You've got to stick at it um, and be prepared to put in the long hours to do this. Um, develop the tour around, you know, what makes you proud of where you come from. You know, showcase, you know, your, your beautiful culture where you come from. The advice I'd give to other Lauks about the cultural tourism ventures they may be starting is it's a great way to share and acknowledge our culture within the non-Indigenous community. It's also good uh, for the Indigenous community as well to get them engaged and get them connected back into country. What I believe is I've been called here by my ancestors to do this job and I need to fulfil what they need me to do and my role is to share our culture and to share our dreaming with the world. So to my land council, Perfilly Parry Land Council, um, I've been there for the last two years and I love my community. It's my community. I was born there, my family are there, my connections are there and it's so good to be home working with and for my people. Um, within our community, I've worked all over the country and um, having come home, I was really disappointed to see that the things that we were doing in everybody else's country weren't being done in mine. Um, so we focused on healing, healing our community and building up the strengths within our communities. And um, we went back to the idea of, of the tradition of women um, being the foundations of our, of our people and went, well, if we're going to heal anything, we need to strengthen our women. So we developed a program called Murupanbian, which means Birupai Flowers. And the reason we called it this was because we figured that when you put a plant in the ground, it needs to have great foundations and then it needs to be nurtured before it can flower. Um, so we need to nurture our women, build up their strength and develop that across the um, community. So our women have been teaching dance. So the photos in the pictures um, show you the young women's dance group that we've developed. Um, the other thing we do is weaving and we do a lot of field trips. We go to places that are significant to our women's women places within Burupa country. Um, the other thing that we found was um, for funerals, our communities were struggling to cover the expenses. Um, so what we did is we thought we'd have um, donations from community and we could do the flower arrangements and assist the community um, with that expense. It started off where um, we were just getting flowers out of the bush in our own gardens. And then other people saw that, so the broader community started to donate flowers. So we'd get there on the day before a funeral and we'd have buckets of flowers sitting outside our land council. Um, we then had, so we've got a Facebook page and a, and a web page and we we're promoting what we're doing for our community and, and the struggle that some of our families have with affording the cost of funerals. and. Um, we had a florist approach us that had just closed a shop and she said, I've got a shop full of goods that I could donate to your group to do the flowers for your community. And she said, no, I'll come and I'll teach us how to do it properly. So in the top photo, um, that was the first coffin reef that we'd done as a, as a group. Um, and then we started to um, you know, build, build our confidence in doing these flower arrangements. And it's so nice to give without getting anything back, just the, the feeling of giving something to our community and our families. Um, and it's been well received where um, just the array, the whole stage is covered with flowers at some of our funerals. The other thing that come of this is we have a historical mission um, cemetery on our community. So the last two years, myself and um, one of the directors and a few community members, a few of our members from our land council have been working at um, compiling the information to see how many, the numbers we have. And we originally thought we had 36 to 40 in our 
from 36 to 40 in our cemetery and we found out now we have 164. So the cemetery is a lot larger than we originally thought. Um, so OEH are going to assist us to um, locate the graves and to beautify the cemetery. Um, it's, an, it's an old cemetery, it's got some traditional burials in it as well. Now the other thing that we've been doing within our community, I've got to hurry up so I'll get to this. Yeah. Okay, we had, um, we have, like everybody else does, a, a lot of people with criminal records wanting to work for our land council and under our legislation we all know that, you know, you do the criminal record checks and that then eliminates them being employed by us. Um, so what we did is we looked at the different industries and what we could do to encourage and build confidence and the skills um, for them to get work in the community. And one of the things we found was within the building industry, they didn't really care whether you could, whether you had a criminal record, just whether you could, could do the job. Um, so we piloted a program with TAFE New Northern's region, um, State Training Services, Nortec, TERSA, ETC, and um, we went into the larger building industry um, leaders and we also um, went to probation and parole. So we've set it up so um, the probation hours, community service hours that the participants have to do was written off as a part of the program. Um, we also do the WDOs under the program and we have 18 participants currently uh, working in this course. The first part of the course is skill sets to develop the skills that industry wanted to be placed as apprenticeships. The second part of the course will look at um, the qualification insert three. And the third part of the course will be actually setting up Aboriginal businesses to do our maintenance and also to, to operate independently outside of the land council. So in the pictures here, we have an old shed that the community have wanted to turn into a community hall. So the guys have stripped that out and they're starting to plan. So part of their training is actually developing the plans as well. And um, yeah, they're, they're going gung-ho, they love it. And um, it's 90% hands-on, so um, little time in the classroom and the classroom's on community. So yeah, so um, yeah, it's awesome. Um, what I also wanted to say too is that all of the land councils in our region are um, a part of saltwater freshwater. Um, so I'd just like to show you a little bit about what we do. And the other thing is NADA um, is another organisation. <laughs> Over 15,000 people braved the wet weather in Coffs Harbour to celebrate culture, art and music at the 2017 Saltwater Freshwater Festival. The gathering is a day of showcases, from dance workshops to yarn ups, highlighting the continuing community strength of the Gumbengia, Birupai, Dungadi and Waramai nations. The festival opened with a welcome to country and smoking ceremony, followed by performances by the Birupai dancers. Uh, you look around, there's a lot of good smiles on people's faces, a lot of different views around what the day means, whether it be survival day, whether it be invasion day, whether it be a reconciliation day, but what it has done is bring people together for a common cause, and that is to have a good day. Saltwater Freshwater focuses on a positive and modern vision for Australia, where First Nations people showcase their culture through performance. It's up to us to design our future. That's what we do. We design our future. We're a governing board that makes all decisions related to the direction of not just New South Wales and the land council, but the Land Rights Network. The New South Wales Aboriginal Land Council was a major sponsor of this year's festival and held special yarn-up sessions, sharing the work of the Land Rights Network. I suppose one of the questions was around what does the New South Wales Aboriginal Land Council do? And, and you know, it's, it's 
being able to access land for Aboriginal communities, local Aboriginal land councils. So, you know, land council, local land councils being able to claim unused, unneeded Crown land for economic development purposes, for social purposes, for um, spiritual purposes and economic development. The chair of the New South Wales Aboriginal Land Council, Roy R.C., says the Saltwater Freshwater Festival plays an important role on January 26th. Newswalk has sponsored uh, the ma one of the major sponsors for this uh, through Councillor uh, Smith, and I think it's been a real, real success. And it's been a real success. And I, and I see the kids running around. And I see the tents and our staff out on the ground, and it's been a really, really fantastic event. And Hopefully Newswalk can get behind it again next year and continue to support it because it adds value to our community and that's what it's about. It's about engaging, re-engaging and bringing our people together. So on that, our next festival is going to be in 2019, and so yes, we would love your support, Newswalk. <laughs> it's recorded. <laughs> um, what's pretty unique about our uh, zone as well is that we have three uh, native title by consent decisions. Uh, one in the Yagel community uh, with Yagel Lauk. Uh, one in the Coffs Harbour con and District a lo Local Aboriginal Land Council zone at Hungry Head and also with Hunkai Land Council at Gungal Wongan. Um, I can tell you it's a very confusing space to be involved in but like we kind of learn as we go, as we always do. Uh, but if we were all rich like this dude, we want him to sell that car and shout us all something, hey, what do you reckon? Um, Thank much admiration um, and respect to all Lauks for the, the work that you're doing. Um, and if there's anything we can share or you can share, then we're going to chase it and or share it. Thank you. Just, just before I go, I've got this, um, or Freud, it's a media release. I just came through the, it's on the website. Uh, Mid-North Coast, land rights media release, Mid-North Coast now went from number one up to deadly and now we just went platinum. Thank you. Go.